I just want to remember who it is. But grosso modo, the attacks have all been coming from people who you can't identify. Is that right? It no, seems that way you, can't, you can't identify any of these people. I mean, they could easily be. Um, One I got today was a hypersensitivity proves yeah. immaturity or whatever. Oh, that, that continues like, with the same. Oh, hypersensitivity? Hypersensitivity about the democratic process like, and corruption? Yeah. Like, if we're not hypersensitive about corruption, who's going to be? WikiLeaks <laughs> is a bold and dangerous, simple, clear idea. Every person in your organisation is potentially the person who could bring you down. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the thing too. I, I thought about it later and I thought, I'm going to put that in my act. I'm hypersensitive about <laughs> some things. And then list the things that I'm hypersensitive about, you know, because they're things that... Dishonor, <laughs> dishonorability, skullduggery, yeah. corruption, yeah. hypocrisy. I'm hypersensitive about all this. Yeah, I'm a drama Exactly. I'm an attention. And so... One is anxious, but doesn't. Work. But um, Leslie, when you think about it, do you see this as a kind of an asymmetrical warfare? Because on the one side you've got people's real identities, the victims of the attacks, and on the other side you've got people hiding behind pseudonyms or behind websites where nobody even knows, you know, who's speaking. Mm. It is a, an asymmetrical sort of a bit unfair because people who have been accused can be pursued and attacked by others, whereas those who have uttered the statements, it's, well, it's not really being directed to anybody in, who's interested in a poll blogger being attacked, you mm. know what I mean, or well, holding them accountable for what they're saying, mm. even if well, it's defamatory. Well, they're choosing that medium on purpose because what they're trying to do, rather than answer the actual claim, which they can't answer without admitting to, to having problems with the process, which mm -hmm. is what we said, and without admitting that, you know, there was something not right that happened in terms of the um, actual preferencing. They've just gone right around and gone, well, we'll go after their credibility. And the best way of going after someone's credibility, I mean, tweeting and, and Facebooking is brilliant for that. If you've got yes. people who are already set up mm -hmm. under pseudonyms, and you know, there can be legitimate reasons people have pseudonyms, but there can also be very illegitimate ones. Yes. So these people are, are custom made yes. for attacking the credibility of people who are public, who, who do have their reputations yes. and their face on the whole thing. Yes. And of course, you can't respond to them at all. You have no idea what their intentions are, what their background is. You can't ask them questions and demand answers. Well, where did you hear that? Can you provide some evidence? They can choose to answer what they want, they don't have to answer. Um, and more importantly, you can't sorry. take them to court for defamation. <laughs> like, like I could afford it anyway. <laughs> but you, you do have some suspicions uh, between the lines on who would be privy to that kind of information uh, about uh, where this is coming from. Oh yeah, I mean there's, there's certainly, you know, now there's been something said that very few people would know. Mm -hmm. um, so it does narrow it down and it does again raise the suspicion that people who are working under pseudonyms are very closely connected to key players and all of this and are being fed particular information or indeed are those key players because again, the pseudonym means you just can't tell. Yeah, so what would that have, uh, what information would that have been most recently? Would that have been a particular tweet or? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a particular tweet that, that basically reveals something that I essentially told to, you know, somebody in the campaign um, and would not be something that anyone else would know. So, you know, it's quite, the whole thing's really quite dodgy. Okay, yeah. Uh, that, that's kind of what has sparked my interest in the first place because the very uh, first attack, which came via a website, uh, it came too soon. It came within hours of the re resignations, and it was it was being written as the events unfolded, and I just thought, well, everything pointed to it being an insider. Hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of investigations that could be done to reveal what's really going on, but I mean, the primary one I'd like to see is the one about the preference review. That's what really this whole thing has been about. The broader context is that uh, this uh, is this the first real test uh, uh, of, as the guardians and, and the advocates of democracy globally, whether they can actually stand a test of true transparency themselves. This We've, is a dose of the truth. Um, the truth is extraordinarily powerful. This is actually a dose of direct democracy. Yeah, well, wouldn't you like to see the people doing those investigations as they've always done in the past for WikiLeaks? 
Well, um, I'd certainly like to see what exactly was promised, which was an immediate, independent um, review of what happened. And in reviewing what had happened with the preferences, the exposure of the more long-standing problems with the way that party was functioning in terms of democratic process and the fierce resistance by a few to the democratic structure um, that was actually um, set up and, and therefore was how properly how the party was sort of constitutionally um, constituted. All of that would have come out if that review had been done and that would have been for the good of everyone. It would have been for the good of managing the immediate problem, which was the um, distress by our base about the preferences. And it would have been fantastic in terms of setting us up for the long term because so many of the people involved in this were not just in it for the short term, they were in it to build a party because this party actually needs to be built on these very fundamental ideas. You know, the WikiLeaks, um, the kernels of the WikiLeaks philosophy ground a party, you know, for eternity, not, not for just this election. So it would have stood us in good stead to have ironed out those really fundamental processes. Mm -hmm. And then instead we were being told, you know, oh, this is politics, you know, you guys are all kind of worried about nothing, the media's moved on, who cares anymore, let's just continue as if that's okay for any party, but particularly for a party that's actually putting itself out there and saying, hey, we're different to everybody else. We, we really care about transparency and accountability and, and democracy, and we really um, will be truthful about who we are and what we do and, and have a concordance between who we are and what we do and what we say we are and what we do. Almost the last thing, like the last straw, uh, was myself getting a phone call from John Shipton uh, where he put a lot of, heaped a lot of shit on, well, yeah, a lot of contempt on the National Council of the party, which I found baffling because I thought the National Council was the whole, you know, almost the whole point of the party, you know. You have a National Council and that's all, that's, you, the engine room of your democracy or the that's where it starts, that's where it all happens, that's where it all begins. And he was saying that the National Council are fucking useless and if you sat in on any of their meetings, you would want to tear their faces off. So that was, you know, I use, I, I, I trade in harsh language and I thought that was harsh. <laughs> um, and then he offered, he said, yeah. why don't, he said, look, you, you um, one of the few who actually do anything and I was making sense of it as he was saying it. I, I assumed he was referring to the fact that I was doing social media stuff, keeping the Facebook page and Twitter feed updated as much as possible. And But it's, it's pretty, I mean, there's a, a knack to it, but it's pretty much, it's workhorse, it's workhorse work. It's not sitting in meetings with the rest of the National Council trying to nut out policy platforms. I mean, to me, that's the real work, you know. I don't delude myself about my own thing. But he so he was flattering me, uh, really laying it on thick uh, in terms of me being, you know, one of the you know, few real workers, you know, in the, you know, get in the party. And then offered me, yeah, so, some sort of uh, promotion uh, that I would work with. I would work with him and Greg Barnes. That I would, I would be talking directly with them. I wouldn't be talking to the council, the national council. I would, I would talk directly to him and Greg Barnes and Julian. Um, and it would be me in Victoria and um, Gail and uh, Matt in New South Wales. Only and, those people. That, that was it. That was what. It, that's what he said to me. So basically. What he was telling me was the WikiLeaks party was about to become him, me, Julian, Greg, Matt and Gail. Not Cassie? No, I didn't mention Cassie. But wasn't she the head of the National Council? Well, what he was saying was that he had no time for the, na the National Council. It was mind-boggling stuff. Yes. So it's all kind of turning inside out now that leaks are coming out of the... The WikiLeaks party. <laughs> That's right, and and ideally, and and you, you go back to the WikiLeaks philosophy. The whole philosophy of the of WikiLeaks is that 
um, insiders will leak information about corruption and by so doing and by everybody knowing that that can happen, it's meant to reduce corruption because people start thinking, you know what, if I do this, someone's going to find out. It's not going to stay secret. This can't go on and you can't do this anymore. Not just, I'm not going to do it, but you're not going to do it. And there you've got a whole bunch of people in the WikiLeaks party running around thinking that their corruption was going to remain secret amongst a bunch of people who know that philosophy and believe in that philosophy and have got involved in the movement because they find corruption unbearable and they know it's destroying our democracy. So how do you think those sense. people feel at the moment, uh, those who were presumably complicit? How do they feel about themselves at the moment? Oh, how, are they, how do you think their morale is holding up? Well, I, I guess because my experience is as an ethicist, you know, I, I have to... I, I'm often somebody who's in the public domain saying, you know, this is right and this is wrong. And that's a hard thing for other people to hear, you know, when they feel that they've done something wrong. It really cuts for them. And so I suspect really what's going on is that a lot of people know that they haven't done the right thing. Um, and instead of owning that, because of course owning things and taking them on board and doing the right thing has been the hallmark of what this event has you know, not been about. It's all been about people not owning things, not taking them on board and not doing the right thing in response. So I think this is more of the same where you're getting people reacting to a sort of deep inner knowledge that they've done the wrong thing by lashing out and leaking to, you know, dodgy people on the internet who then troll you and spreading rumours and not doing the review like nobody's asked the WikiLeaks party say, you know, it's a couple of weeks out now since you announced that independent review. What are the terms of reference? Have you hired the independent person yet to do it? Because I bloody bet you if they'd asked that question the answer would be, what? I don't reckon there's any intention to do that review now that the people who wanted it are gone. You know, media's moved on, who cares? Well, I think I've heard some uh, evidence that that review was not going to happen. Anyway, that's right. At least not after, after the election and that it wasn't going to be independent. Well, that's right. And that, that's, you know, what tipped us over the edge was that immediate phone call that came through that said, you know, that independent review we just announced to the public we don't intend to actually make it independent, I'm going to do it, and, you know, it'll come out whenever the hell I say. And then we've had subsequent, you know, recorded conversations that have suggested it would never be made public, it would only be told to certain people in, in the organisation. So now my view is not only are we not going to get, that we're unlikely to even get a corrupted review, we're probably yes. not going to get when you said that somebody said, I'm going to do it, can, can you tell us who said that? Look, I've been holding to not naming names, and the only reason I have been holding to that is I keep kind of holding on to this idea that the best way to get things to change is not to point the finger. You know, I do a bit of stuff around change, and so when you start naming names, it becomes all about that, and people get defensive, and I just feel like everybody involved in all of this really wants it to be different. They did this thing because they felt they couldn't do other, but they also felt like if we're going to build for the future with this party, we've got to clean it up. We've actually got to get the democratic structure, not just in name, but in function. Well, it was going to be an inspiration for other countries as well. I mean, there were so many looking on to see how it worked in Australia. So it would have been good, wouldn't it, to actually make it succeed? Well, it's been, the disappointments are, yeah, legion. <laughs> Do you think there's any hope? Disappointments are legion. Do you think there's still any hope of um, straightening things out, or do you think that the the fact that finger was pointed at particular people and not with the in any way appropriate criticisms, but just to you know, people had then to defend do. themselves. Um, do you uh, think that makes it kind of too late now to put Humpty Dumpty back together again? Look, I, I don't think the fault lies with people who, who wanted to name names. People have different philosophies about that, and the truth is the truth. And those people had names, and the right names have been named. And so I'm not in any way suggesting anyone's done the wrong thing. It just wasn't my style. It just wasn't my sort of choice. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I guess my thoughts now are probably that if we want to have the movement we wanted through the WikiLeaks party, we're probably going to have to find another name and take all the wonderful people who left and who have the skills and the integrity and built the movement in this country over years. And, and they're really, you know, they're really holding um, this gem in their hands. It, it doesn't belong to anybody other than people who actually get it in that deep and profound sense and get that it has to not just be about what we say we are, but what we actually are. So those people I trust and those people I would, you know, I would um, take a bullet for. Yeah. Well, Dan Matthews makes a comment about, uh, you know, with a different kind of mandate that wasn't democratic, that, uh, well, he wouldn't have joined. But do you think it would have worked? Uh, would you have joined? No, I never would have joined. I never would have joined. And, and Dan, you know, did say that. He said he doesn't really understand why the party was set up democratically, because clearly the people who set it up didn't really want it to be a democracy. They wanted it to, they wanted to run it, and then they wanted the democratic structure to look good and then provide a rubber stamp. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, someone like Dan would never have been part of something like that. I would never have been part of something like that. And I think the boasts that are often made about the quality of people who were attracted to the party meant that that you know, what was important to the people who were running it. They wanted to reap the benefits of looking like a democracy, but they didn't want to actually have to do the hard work of actually having a democracy. Yeah. So, Leslie, you're, you're still running, even though you, uh, you're still on the ticket. Have you been able to collect your thoughts on what you're going to, how you're going to um, Run and, and this. I mean, have you got anything to say as an independent yet, or will you continue to fight for the same principles that you were fighting for within the WikiLeaks party if you're elected? Yeah, I mean, I'm still the same person, I still believe the same things. I, I, I sort of think it's so unlikely that I'm gonna, you know, get to the point where I have to really deal with. The realities of being elected so you know what I've done is I've released a statement of candidacy that kind of explains the reality which is that I am still on the ballot and there's no way of getting off um, and explaining that I wasn't campaigning and I haven't been campaigning but that there's you know for people who want to do something about it um, they can vote for me you know number one WikiLeaks and that means Julian gets the first lot I get the second lot and Benoit gets the third just as the WikiLeaks party has always been um, or they can vote for me below the line with the Williams and other candidates they have to number um, but I I've been you know very hands-off about it because it is confusing you know it's confusing to the electorate there wasn't time to re-educate we did all talk about it but there just wasn't time to collect our thoughts so everyone was so distressed nobody was ready to move mm. on yet to that yeah. I still don't actually even feel ready yes because you're sort of that. still the running partner but you're not you're divorced I believe in the ideal, I just didn't believe in the reality. I couldn't stand by the reality. I couldn't look you in the face, I couldn't look anybody in the face and say the things I was having to say. I got that from your statement. Yeah. Alright, thanks a lot.